Hello, Math 2 students. I hope you're ready to graph a quadratic function in intercept form. First, a quick review. We know three different forms of the equation for a quadratic function. The first one we learned was standard form, f of x equals a x squared plus bx plus c. You can tell the y-intercept at a glance because c is the y-intercept, and you can find the x-coordinate of the vertex by using this formula x equals negative b over 2a. The next equation that we learned is we learned about vertex form where you can find the vertex at a glance and the vertex is h comma k. Remember in vertex form because of this minus sign the h value or your x coordinate of your vertex is going to have the opposite sign that you see inside the parentheses. Now we're working on intercept form. Intercept form is f of x equals a times x minus p times x minus q. These are the binomial factors of standard form. You can tell the x-intercepts at a glance, and you can find the x-coordinate of the vertex by adding the two x-intercepts and dividing by 2. So what we want to do now is we want to graph y equals negative 1 fourth times the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 2. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to identify what the x-intercepts are. So my x-intercepts are 4 and negative 2. So those are my x-intercepts. So I know that my parabola is going to cross the x-axis at positive 4 and at negative 2. Now, in order to graph this, I'm going to need to find at least one more point on my graph. And that point that I want to find is going to be my vertex. So I'm going to use this formula right here. I'm going to take my two x-intercepts, and I'm going to add them up and divide by 2. What that will tell me is the exact midpoint between these two x-intercepts. So I start out, x equals 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2. So that's going to be 2 on top and 2 on the bottom. So that will be 1. So the exact middle where my axis of symmetry is, is going to be in 1, in 1, in 1, in 1, in 1, in 1. That is the exact middle, just like our calculation showed us. So my axis of symmetry is going to look like this. So there's my axis of symmetry. Now I just need to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. So in order to find the y-coordinate, I think I need some more space. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go y equals negative 1 fourth times empty bracket minus 4 times empty bracket plus 2. I'm going to put my x value, which is 1, the x coordinate of my vertex, in here. So that's going to give me y equals negative 1 fourth times negative 3 times positive 3. So that's going to come out to uh, negative 1 fourth times negative 9. So that's going to be positive 9 over 4. And if you're using a calculator, that's going to come out to y equals 2.25. My vertex is at 1 comma 2.25. So now I'm going to go put that on the graph, which is going to require a little bit of estimating. So I'm going to go over 1, which is where my axis of symmetry is, and up 2 and a quarter. So 1, 2, I would say there's 2 and a half right there. So 2 and a quarter is going to be about right there. So that's over 1 and up 2.25. And so now my parabola is going to look like this. So this is the graph of this quadratic function, which was given to us in intercept form. On this problem, we're going to graph y equals x times the quantity x minus 4. So maybe you're wondering, this doesn't look like the last equation. The last equation was in intercept form. What kind of an equation is this? Well, we know it's not standard form because we can see the parentheses. And we know it's not vertex form because we have parentheses, but the parentheses do not have a 2 for the exponent. It's not squared. So this problem is in intercept form. And later on, you'll make the connection that 
It's in intercept form, and this is a problem that has a greatest common factor of x. So we're going to start out, and I'm going to find the x-intercepts. And so my x-intercepts are, remember when you have a variable in front of the parentheses, that would be 0, and that would be 4. So our x-intercepts are 0 and 4 on this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on the graph. There's where x equals 0, and here's where x equals 4. So those are our x-intercepts. Now I'm going to put the vertex on there, just like on the last problem, and I'm going to connect those three points to make the parabola. So I start out with x equals, and then I'm going to take these two x-intercepts and add them up and divide by 2. Now that's going to give me the exact middle point in between the two x-intercepts. So that will be 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So I know my axis of symmetry is going to be right here at x equals 2. Now I need to find the y coordinate. So I need more space. I'm going to come over here. So I have y equals 2 times 2 minus 4. So I'm going to start by doing the math problem inside of the parentheses. So that's 2 times negative 2. So our y coordinate is negative 4. That makes our vertex 2 comma negative 4. So I'm going to come over here and go over 2 and down 4. And now I'm going to connect those to make a smooth parabola. And it's going to look like this. And for the final example on this video, we're going to graph y equals 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared. This is a more interesting problem. Is this problem in standard form? Well, it has parentheses, so it definitely is not in standard form. Is this problem in intercept form? Well, if you write it like this, it is. We can rewrite it y equals 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 3. And that would look exactly like intercept form. But it also looks just like vertex form because it has a set of parentheses squared. So in vertex form, we can write it like this. y equals 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared plus 0. So this is how it would look if we wrote it in intercept form. This is how it would look if we wrote it in vertex form. So what information do we know from this problem? Well, to start off, we know the x-intercepts by looking at, at intercept form. The x-intercept is going to be negative 3 and negative 3. The x-intercepts are the same. It looks like the x-intercepts are right here. Now, if we go over here and we look at vertex form, and we look at the h and k, it's telling us that our vertex is at negative 3, comma, 0. Well, that means our x-intercept and our vertex are the same thing. So now when we take a look at our a value, our a is 2, so we know it's going to open up, and it's going to have a vertical stretch of 2. So I think that my parabola is going to look like this. It's only going to touch the x-axis in one place. So this is a different kind of problem. And now I'm not going to have three points to join together in order to make my parabola, and I need at least three. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to make a table and put some values in my table and see what I can find out about the rest of the parabola. So my table is going to look like this. And I'm going to take my vertex, which is negative 3, 0, and put it in the middle. If I'm at negative 3, one side of negative 3 is where you find negative 2. The other side of negative 3 is where you find negative 4. If we keep going this direction, we'll get to negative 1. And if we keep going this direction, we'll get to negative 5. So now, remember, this point on my graph and this point on my graph are going to be symmetrical. So they have the same y value. And this point will be symmetrical with that point right there. So I'm going to take my original equation, 
and I'm going to put in, let's start with negative 4. So I have y equals 2 times negative 4 plus 3 squared. So I'm taking my x value of negative 4, putting it into my original function, which becomes y equals 2 times negative 1 squared. So that becomes y equals 2 times 1. So my y value will be 2. So when I put negative 4 in, my y value is 2. That means when I put negative 2 in, my y value will also be 2. Now I'm going to repeat this one more time by putting negative 5 in for x. I'm going to take my x value of negative 5, put in for x in the original function, negative 5 and positive 3. The math inside the parentheses comes out to negative 2. Negative 2 to the second power is 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. So when I put negative 5 into my original function for the x value, I get 8 out for the y value. And so I know that if I put negative 1 in, I will also get 8 out. So now I have my vertex, which is also my x-intercept on this problem. And now I just need to plot the rest of these points. I put all the points from my table onto my graph and now I have a smooth curve. It's a parabola that opens up and it has a vertical stretch of 2.